Hi everyone, this is Rachel from Taylor and Kensington and this is my first YouTube video for uh, my book blog. Today I'm going to be reviewing In the Heart of the Sea, The Tragedy of the Whale Ship Essex by Nathaniel Philbrick. This is a non-fiction account of the sinking of the whale ship Essex. I started reading this as an audiobook in my car on the way to and from work. I love to do that because it gives me a little bit of extra time every day to get some reading in. But I found with this one, maybe because it was a nonfiction, uh, maybe because it just had so many details, it was kind of harder to follow along. I found myself wanting to look back several times, so I'd have to listen to a section several times in order to get the most out of that chapter. So I decided to switch to the paper copy. So I borrowed it from my local library and it went a lot better. So if you're thinking about reading this book, I would highly suggest to get the physical copy either in paper or maybe in an ebook instead of the audiobook. It was a great retelling of it in the audiobook, but it was just hard to follow along, I felt. With the book, though, it was pretty interesting. This actually, uh, well, not this, this book in particular, but the story that the book recounts for us is what inspires the book Moby Dick by Herman Melville. So I'm really looking forward to reading that, uh, hopefully sometime this year, to see how, how close it is, to see what parts uh, Herman Melville pulled from this, this story. I think it'll be really interesting. Uh, another thing is that this is the first account of a whale attacking a whale ship. That I thought was very interesting and very terrifying. So basically, this is the story of the whale ship Essex. They they leave Nantucket, and you learn quite a bit about Nantucket that I didn't know too much about. Um, the Quakers that lived there in the beginning, and you learn quite a bit about Quakers, I did not know as well. The, the Quakers who really established Nantucket as a key whaling capital of the world uh, sent out several ships every year to gather oil from whales and they, they hunt these whales down they get the oil from the whale they head back and that's how they made all their money they made a really wealthy island industry from it this particular case they send out the Essex in the same manner that they had a lot of times and, and the thing you realize is that their family didn't even realize anything was wrong because they would be gone sailing hunting these whales for two and three years so when they didn't come home after a year they didn't think anything of it. They thought maybe they were doing well or maybe they had a rough patch and they were staying a little bit longer. So there was really no concern until they started hearing accounts of a whale attacking the Essex and they know their family members are on there. Uh, the, the whale hitting it is not really the big surprise in this book. It happens pretty quick, I think within like the first two or three chapters. The rest of the story is really a story of survival. How these men make it back home after the whale attacks them in the middle of the sea. They start out in Nantucket and they go all the way down around the coast of South America and then back around. I think the last time they're on track is at the Galapagos Islands and they're talking about all the turtles and that's really neat too to hear about all the nature and all the things they find on their journey. And then right off the coast of the Galapagos out in the middle of the ocean they're attacked by a whale and again this has never really happened at least in Nantucket whaling history. So this came as a complete surprise and of course it sank their boat. So now they're in these little boats and trying to make it back home in the middle of the ocean. It's a pretty good tale. However, it was pretty graphic in some parts. Uh, they are hunting whales and you get the quite full experience of them hunting the whales. But also you have to remember that they are in a fight for their life once the whale sinks the ship. So some pretty graphic things do happen. However, it's a really interesting tale of how these guys survive in the middle of the ocean after their boat is sunk. They get in these little whale boats and they have to travel around the open seas to try to find land, to try to find food, to try to find clean water. It's it's a really interesting tale and it makes you think, well, what would I do in that case? What would I do to survive? What are the limits of what I would do? What are the limits of what I wouldn't do? It makes you really think. It's it's pretty interesting, especially considering that it's ha this happened so long ago. They didn't have the modern technologies that we do. They can't just have somebody fly in and save them. I mean, they were pretty much on their own. So in that respect, it was pretty interesting. I liked hearing, you know, the real life telling of this, especially since it inspired a literature favorite, Moby Dick. So if you're interested, go check it out. I think I gave it uh, three out of five stars because it was kind of slow for me, but it was pretty good. I'm glad I read it. So if you're interested, please read it and share your comments down below. Thanks.